Hello. In this video, I wanted to go over how we read a titration curve for an amino acid. I'm just going to go over several important points about this titration curve so as to add some clarity around maybe some of the confusion floating around there regarding how to look at these and get information from them. So the first thing that we need to notice about this amino acid is that there are three pKa's. That means there are three protons that can be lost from this amino acid. And the first proton to be lost or to be given up by an amino acid in all amino acids is the carboxylic acid on the backbone. You can see that up here. By the way, this amino acid is histidine and its R group can lose a proton um, right here in this imidazole ring. But the first proton to be lost as um, a strong base is titrated, which is what is meant by equivalence of OH down here at the very bottom. We are titrating with a strong base. The first proton to go is this one right here. And so as base is added to this solution, that proton begins to fall off and combine with the hydroxide to form water. And at the pKa, at 1.82, there is a 50% of the histidine molecules are in this form here, where the carboxylic acid is protonated, and 50% of them are in this form here, where the carboxylic acid is deprotonated. As uh, OH is continually added, more and more of this form disappears and becomes this form. So anywhere at pH is above the pKa, we would say there is more of the basic form if we're looking at these two here and then continuing on all the way until the first equivalence point. You can see that this corresponds to one down here. When we say equivalence of OH, we are referring to adding the same concentration of base and acid, and on a titration curve, that point occurs at the inflection point of the graph. In this case, um, the equivalence is labeled as 1, and that will always be where we have an inflection point in the graph. So at this point, effectively, or um, in terms of probability, all of the histidine is in this form. And I say all sort of in air quotes because not all of it is in this form. These are all in equilibrium with each other in some form or fashion, or they are at least reversible reactions. And so there's still some in each one of these forms at all pHs, but the, the, the vast majority of the amino acid is going to be in this form. Continuing on up, adding more and more base, the second proton to come off is in the R group. That's what's indicated by this pKr. And that is this proton right here. So the proton on the imidazole ring comes off. And then at the pKa at 6, at pKar, um, that form here is in 50% proportion. And this form is in 50% proportion. So these two are at equal concentrations at the pKar, or at a pH of 6. Also keep in mind that all of the pKa values represent pH values. And those pH values are unchanging for this particular structure. That's always true for acids. The pKa doesn't change. The thing that can change is the pH around the molecule. All right, so continuing on, adding more and more base. More of the amino acid is going to be in this form here. 
as more base is added above this pH of 6, above this pKa R, all the way to the point where we get here. And this particular inflection point is a special one. We call this inflection point the PI. So this is a very specific pH value. And it's going to fall in between the pKAR and the pKA for NH3. And we can actually calculate what this PI will be for histidine. And the way that we would do that is take the average of these two pKa's because essentially this is going this is going to fall right in between the two pKa's so we can take the average 9.17 plus 6.0 and divide by 2 and when we do that we get a value of 7.58 And so 7.58 is the PI of histidine. And the PI is special because at the PI, at this pH value, remember these are all pH values, at this pH value of 7.58, the histidine will be in the form where it has zero charge. Again, not all of it, not every single molecule, but the vast majority of the molecules will be have a charge of zero overall. And the way looking at this, we see that there's a negative charge here, a positive charge here, and no other charges anywhere else in the molecule. So this is the Zwitter ionic form of histidine, and so it has a charge of zero. Therefore, at a pH of 7.58, histidine will not migrate in an electric field. So if we made up a gel and made it at a pH of 7.5, histidine would not move uh, one way or the other in that electric field. Okay, continuing to add base, the proton that will come off next will be from this amine group on the backbone. So more and more of the amino acid will take on this form the charge is negative 1, all the way up until we get to the pKa. At that point, these two are 50% proportion. So before we get to the pKa, there's still more of this form here than there is this. But once we hit that pKa, then these two are at 50% concentration. And then continuing to add base above that, this form is what predominates. So we could continue to add base all the way until we get to a point where, effectively speaking, practically speaking, this is the only thing that's existing in the solution with very small amounts of each of these there. I also want to point your attention to the x-axis. Remember I told you that all of these were pH values. So whenever you're reporting pKa's or you're reporting pi's, make sure that you are reading that from the y-axis not from the x-axis. Now, there's some special things about the x-axis that help you find where these pH values are, and that is that at the 0.5 equivalents of each of these, and I know my axis here is a little bit off, um, I just drew this by hand, and same with the y-axis, it's not quite um, measured out correctly, but it's close enough to make the point. So at the 0.5 of each of these equivalents, that is what will correspond to pKa's. Okay, but again, it is the y value that is get reported, not the x value. It's a common mistake people make. And then at the um, 1 and 2, these are the inflection points. These are the equivalence points. And the one that is where we would uh, find the one with the form with charge of zero. So that's the PI. It happens to be the second inflection point for histidine. It's not always the second one. It depends on the amino acid. Um, wherever we find this, this predominating, 
that is the pi value, but it will correspond with one, two, or three equivalents depending on the amino acid of um, base that's added. And then you would take this and either do the average, taking the pKa's on either side of that form, or you could draw a tie line over here to the uh, y-axis to approximate what that pH should be. All right, well, I hope that was helpful, and we'll see you next time.